Aloha everybody and welcome to part 19 of Banjo-Kazooie. So we have to step on this teleporter with Tootie's face on it and we'll be heading off to the final confrontation. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, by the way, here's a cauldron. That's weird. If this is the end of the game, why is there another cauldron? Anywho, Grunty has decided to make us earn Tootie through a game show, and there's a whole bunch of different spaces with different kinds of questions or activities, and uh, even different rewards sometimes. But uh, that means you better have been paying attention during the entire game, because you have to rem remember what exactly happened in the worlds you were playing in. You have to remember what the names of your abilities and the items you're picking up and the music you were listening to and stuff like that. Grunty's basically going, Oh, did you like this game? You made it all the way to the end. You must have liked this game to, to enjoy to have played it this much. Well, let's hope that you remember most of it. See this screen? Do you know where you have been? Well, it, it has a blue tint, so it seemed underwater. And I don't remember any underwater segments in Mumbo's Mountain. Click clock wood. I don't think it had any wood underwater. Aside from the tree. So boom, treasure trove. I got a point. I won. I can move on. If you fail a question, uh, you take damage. But there is honey scattered throughout this thing. And uh, so, you know, there's a chance to regain some health if you lose. The Gruntilda squares. That's the reason we've been talking to Bruntilda. Gruntilda's nice... Uh, innocent little sister because she asks us personal questions that we sh really shouldn't know but if we've been talking to Brentilda then we know the answer to so I know that Grunty and the monster mob was her band because that's what Brentilda told me so again I hope you were writing that down because every playthrough is different and no no one could tell me it's set to files I did a f I did a, a, a playthrough on file 2 and file 3 for test playthrough right and in file 3, she said some answers that were in file 2, and not vice versa. I'm... bullshit. It is always random every time you play this game. I have played this game many times on file 1, and it has never been the same answer. Brentilda will constantly randomize these answers every time you start a new playthrough. So, you know. Oh, god. I'm also taking damage because I thought there were seven turtles. Because I was thinking back, like, shouldn't the big turtle count and Tip Top and his choir? And I was like, wait, were there seven? Were there... No, I don't know. I have to look on that one one more time. But, uh, you know. The musical note square. Well, you got to listen to the sound effects. You have to listen to the music. So you listen to music. And then you go, oh, well, that's my Wonder Wing ability. That's the music that plays during that. Boom, I got a score. The Joker is the best square, because if you win this one, you get two free passes to skip any question that you want. Uh, so, look at my missiles, look at my build muscles taut. What's my favorite enjoyable spot? That would be loogie flicking. It's gross, but I, I learned that. And now that I've answered that correctly, I got two jokers. I can skip two uh, questions that I don't want to do. All you have to do is go to uh, a question you don't want to do, press the B button, and you're allowed to do so. Uh, the joker question can be completely random. They don't tell you what kind of question they're going to be asking. Uh, generally, it's going to be randomized, so sometimes it can be a Gruntilda personal question. So, you know, keep an eye out. Huh, a clock with no hands. Where have I mentioned that before? Bad monster mansion, baby. Bad monster mansion. Ooh, yeah. Spiral Mountain's got my face! How many molehills in this place? Oof, that one's tough. 
Because you got to think of, like, when he first shows up, the one at the top of the mountain, all the tutorial mountain, the molehills. So, uh, I guessed, actually, on that one. I was like, uh, uh, eight? So what happens, um, if you lose all your health? Well, you have to redo it all, all over again. And again, the questions will sort of be randomized. Uh, the clock squares, as you can see, they're putting us into an activity. If we fail the activity, we do not advance. We have to spell Banjo-Kazooie here in Treasure Trove Cove's sad castle uh, completely backwards. And if I don't make it in under 43 seconds, then I lose. That's the name of the game. Uh, the other activities it could be, uh, there's... You remember that my competition with Mr. Vile where I had to eat all those red jumblies? That's a... that's a... A sort of a competition. Uh, there's the pyramid one, where you have to fold the things in like pairs, sort of like that Mario 3 game. We saw it in the in the pyramid, but we're actually going to see it in this video. But uh, you know, the clock questions can be annoying, especially if it comes on Mr. Vile and you're not good at collecting those jumblies. I remember that's the only reason I like to skip clock ones usually. I played them for this LP just to show it off. But usually when I play this level, I just like skip the clock questions because I don't like them. <laughs> I don't like the activities, I'd rather just answer trivia. What does Granny like for dinner? Well, I believe that would be Slug Stew. Oh, I was right again. Now the skull questions are a lot more intense because if you get that wrong, then you're dead. You're, that's instant game over if you get these questions wrong. <laughs> But you can skip it with a Joker card, if you so desire. So that's one reason you may want to pick up a Joker card, because if you're so not familiar with the game, if you barely paid attention to things, those Skull cards can instantly ruin your day. And, uh, you know. That would be inside the Squirrel's house. It's definitely not Banjo's house. And it's definitely not Banjo the Squirrel's house, because I don't know what character that was. <laughs> they have a tower in which they hide on Mumbo's Mountain. What's inside? Well, not bats, not bees, so it must be Ticker the Termite. Ah, uh, yeah. Some questions are pretty obvious like that, because they give you such answers that are so deliberately wrong that you're just like, oh, come on, we all know this. Small, small opening, Mumbo's house... No bubble gloop swamp on the board. That would have tripped me up a little bit. So it must be Mad Monster Mansion. A booyah. I looks at school where never thin. What award did I always win? Uh, dirtiest undies, Gruntilda. Why? Don't remind me of these things. I'm already traumatized that Gruntilda told me all these horrible things. Good God. When Click Clock Hood, he's the king. What's the squirrel doing at spring? He's just eating his nuts. Yep. Booyah. That's another reason you may want to check out Nab Nuts, because, hey, if I didn't check him out in spring, I would not have known that. It wasn't important to the quest, but I wouldn't have known that. I believe that is Boggy the Polar Bear, because the walrus had more of a or 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 sound. So yeah, you even have to remember characters' voices. Let's stop now then, make your choice. Which character has this dumb voice? <laughs> Napper. And that one was obvious because none of the other answers made sense. There is no injured ghost. There is no... Whatever that other ghost was, I wasn't paying attention. But, uh... <laughs> I just know it was wrong. So here, the only way you can sort of plan out your route is to look at the, uh, go into first person mode and actually check things out. I skipped that clock question, but I was like, eh, is there anything else I want to skip? Like any skull icons? So uh, I'm sort of pushing first person mode to look. I don't think there's a way to, like, pull the camera back out, like, a lot. So, uh, you know, that's what I did. That's definitely Mumbo's house. There's a lot of wood behind it. Green background. I think that's Bubble Gloop Swamp. Must be. Uh, certainly not Grunny's lair, because there's no one in there. Oh, yeah. I do enjoy the Gruntilda questions. I got a natural pose. Where do I get my delightful clothes? That would be the witch's warehouse. Oh, yeah. All the other bonus answers, by the way, are actual things that Gruntilda will randomize. They can be those other things. So she has an eyeball flower by her pot, but she could have a loogie bush. 
That's a, that's a potential answer for a different playthrough of this game. So, you know, that's interesting. Which character has this dumb voice? Well, I do believe there is no crocodile, there is no... Well, there might be a crab. Man, there's no crab. Nipper the Hermit Crab it is. <laughs> I got two cards left, and there are two skull icons in front of me, so I figured I'd do this clock question. And I gotta do the pairs uh, pyramid game in a very strict time limit, but, uh, you know. That's also good. I like the fact that the writers made Gruntilda the host of this game show, because that means every line of dialogue, every single question that is being asked, has to be done in rhyme. And it must have been so fun writing this, like trying to come up with like, okay, we need to ask people what they're do what Nabnuts the squirrel was doing in spring. How do we make that into a delightful rhyme? <laughs> it must have been so fun being the writer of Gruntilda's dialogue. I mean, seriously, I have fun listening to it. It's so fun playing this game and just hearing all the wacky ways she talks about things. You know, I just love that about Gruntilda. I love her rhyming. It's so unique. It's so fun. She's a witch. You'd think that she has a, a weird, magical, crazy way of talking, and sure enough, she does, and I love it. I love it. Banjo-Tooie got rid of that pretty quickly. And I'm not bad mouth for Banjo-Tooie. It's a fine game, but damn it, Banjo-Tooie. It's so fun, this dialogue. The haunted mansion in my ground. How many ways in could be found? This can count windows as well. So you got, like, three in the first floor, two in the first floor, that's five, and I think two more, so I was saying... No, oh, I don't know. So I said nine. And I was I was right, apparently. <laughs> that one was hard. You have like ten seconds to answer each question, so that was really tricky. What's my amazing party? Oh, God. It's to perform a strip tease. Don't put these images into my head anymore! I don't want to remember this! Uh, screw this other question, I'm skipping it! <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Banjo-Kazooie. Because the credits are rolling, we have saved Tootie. This is indeed the end of the game. Uh, quite the ending, indeed. <laughs> we play a game show to rescue Tootie, how about that? So I cannot gush about Banjo-Kazooie enough. It is such a fantastic game. Uh, you know, collectathons, I, I don't usually like them if they're too big. There's a reason I don't really like replaying Donkey Kong 64. There's a, re the reason, there's a reason I never really went back to Banjo-Tooie and stuff like that. But when they condense it enough and make it more simple and more Zelda-like and stuff, I really do enjoy it for the most part, you know. Um, in fact, if you, you want another rare game that I actually do like that a lot of people shit on, Star Fox Adventures. I like that game a lot because it wasn't so big. It was kind of linear for the most part, but, you know, it was still, like a nice explore exploration game where you happen to be collecting things and it wasn't too big. It, it kept on focus and I liked that. And Banjo-Kazooie, I felt, was just small enough, but also big enough that, you know, you could go into one world, clear it out in one playthrough, and you didn't have to backtrack to another world in order to finish it most of the time. Like, uh, Freeze Easy Peak, Gobi's Valley, that was a different scenario, but that happened like once during the whole entire game. Um, the music, I cannot gush about the soundtrack enough. <laughs> I've already gushed about it 10 million times in the playthrough, but seriously, good god. 
this soundtrack is so, so, so great. And, uh, you know, I still listen to it on occasion because it's so great. And, um, the characters are pretty funny. I like the dialogue. I like the situations. I like all these... Mr. Vile! Mer, 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 mer. I'm gonna eat red jumblies. <laughs> Uh, Banjo-Kazooie is a solid, solid Nintendo 64 game. Uh, this made... I, I, again, my kind of favorite game is, is platformers. This is why I'm a fan of Sonic and Mega Man and Mario and stuff like that, you know? I'm not a big first-person shooter guy, I'm not a big, uh, puzzle guy. Although, Tetris Attack, I would school you in. Because Tetris Attack is my puzzle game. Oh, man, am I a, am I a beast on that one. But, uh... <laughs> You know, platformers, they're my thing, and Banjo-Kazooie is a very, very solid platformer. This is a reason I was playing my N64 for a long time, back in 1998. This is why I wasn't doing my homework when I was a kid. <laughs> Although I caught up in the nick of time, barely getting like a, a C or a B, but you know, I still did it. Uh, yeah, it's just fun stuff. It's very addicting, it's very satisfying, and, um... Really, that's all you can ask for in a Nintendo game. Some Nintendo 64 games you might be able to beat in, like, two hours, maybe right away. But this one, oh god, it lasts forever. Not forever, forever, but I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> Either way... The sleeping ghost. Strange noisemakers. I like even these credits are funny. <laughs> but I was just basically saying that again. I have no plans to do Banjo Tooie. I have no plans uh, to do Grunty's Revenge, the GBA game. I have no plans to do Banjo Pilot. I have no plans to do Diddy Con Racing. I have no plans to do well, maybe Diddy Con Racing one day. I do love that game to death. Not lately, not recently. I don't play, have plans to do B Diddy Con Racing recently. Uh, and I have no plans to do Banjo Tooie. So, you know. I just want to warn you guys that Banjo Tooie is my favorite of the series. It's also been the one standout game of the series that I really love. And the others are, they're fine, but I don't really have uh, an inkling to LP them. So, if you want to see what happens to Gruntilda and company, you might want to check out Banjo Tooie. You might want to see how the game continues. For yourself, and maybe you'll like it more than me. Ted, X and Shadow of Brain Scratch, he likes Tui more than me. Oh wait, we're not done yet. We didn't beat up Gruntilda. Uh, see you in part 20. <laughs> <laughs>